Hello, this is John Buck. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about properties of discrete time systems. There are five important properties that we want to be able to uh, address for each system or be able to look at a system and say whether it which of these five properties it has. That is, is it a linear system? Is it a time invariant system? Is it a stable system? Is it a causal system? And is it an invertible system? And the first two, linearity and time invariance, are the most important because they lead to set the table for pretty much all the other properties we'll look at this semester. And in this video, I'm going to focus just on the definition of linearity. I'll do other videos for each of the other the pro definitions of the other properties. And there will also be videos showing some examples of, since this is so important, how do we prove if a system's linear? If you get a look at a new system and say, oh, I want to know, maybe I think it's linear, but how do I prove it's linear? And, and how do I go about doing that? So I'll show all those in separate videos. So there's going to be a whole chain of videos about these properties. So if we switch over to the whiteboard again, the, the properties today, uh, today's properties that uh, the linear linearity property of discrete time systems. How do we, what's the definition of saying a system is linear? And this is the most complicated in some ways of the five properties and that it has two pieces. To say a system is linear, really comes down to two pieces. We need to show that it has the scaling property and the superposition property. And when we say to talk about a system here, we'll do it both with equations and with graphics. So for our, our system, one of the ways we'll often write this for just a generic system is that we'll say the output signal y of n is some transformation of the input signal x of n. And we don't even really need to say what it is for now. We're going to look at different specific examples. I already showed a, a couple examples in the Fundamentals of Systems video a few minutes ago. Uh, but to say it's linear, what, what this means is, is the scaling property says that if we have this property here, if y of n is equal to that, then when I apply the transformation to a times the input, if I plug in a times the input, the output I better get back has to be y a times y of n. So if I scale the input by some constant, I scale the output by the same constant. We can also sometimes show that in graphical form. Some people find it easier to think about this in pictures where I say, well, x of n is the input to the system, and y of n is the output. If I then have a new input, say f of n is equal to a x of n, let's just scoot that over a little bit. So if I now put this new input into the system, what this is saying is my new output, let's call it g of n, is going to be the same output I had above scaled by the same amount. So if I turn up the, the volume by a on the input, the output has to come up by exactly the same amount. So that's the first piece. The second piece is the superposition property. What that says, if I have a couple of inputs, so I say, well, y of n is equal to the trans, is the output I get when I put in x of n, x1 of n. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be y1. And then similarly, I'll put a second input in and get a second output. So that the transformation of x2 of n by the system turns into y2 of n. But if the system is superposition, what this says, to satisfy the superposition property, What that says is if my new input is, uh, let's say, f of n is equal to x1 of n plus x2 of n. So I take the two inputs I had before and add them together, and then I put that whole thing as my input into the system. Then my output, my new output should be y1 of n plus y2 of n. Okay, so that's the uh, superposition. If I do that uh, in the graphical form, 
I could say I have, again, my input-output diagram. So x of n goes into some system, and the output is y1 of n. And x2 of n goes into a different input. Or, I'm sorry, it goes into the same system. Different input, same system. That's very important. And I get a corresponding output for that. This is saying that when my, my new input is the sum of those two inputs. So I take x2, add x1 of n, and let's call that, that new input, we'll say it's f of n. When I put that into the system, the output I get has to be the same, or it has to be the sum of the same two outputs I had before. So by combining those two outputs, I have to combine the two inputs. Another way, I'll just maybe... Uh, Put one more. Sometimes you'll see this input addition like this as well. So I say I take these two inputs and add them together to get my new input f of n into my system. And what I get out g of n has to be the sum of the two inputs I already had. Okay, so again, that's the basic definition of linearity. Two important pieces, scaling and superposition. Scaling says that if I scale the input, any input, by a constant amount, I have to scale the corresponding output by the same constant amount. If superposition says if I add two inputs, the two outputs will be added the same way for, every, for a linear system. And I need both of those for the system to be linear. So, so a linear system... It's an important thing. A linear system, this requires both scaling and superposition. If you only have one without the other, it's not a linear system. And we'll see that when we start in another video. I'll show some an example of proving how do we prove whether a system is linear. If you get an unknown system and someone asks you, is this a linear system, how do you go about proving that? But this is if, if you fail either one of these, it's not linear system. Okay, so that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.